Welcome to the Qualitative Election Study of Britain's Election Night Special. I'm Edzia. I'm Christy. We are going to talk to you about our participants' impressions of the debates. Um, the debates were very much front and center of the election campaign. Uh, people who followed the wrangling surrounding the debates were quite interested in, in the format in, that the debates would take in who would who would be involved and how many would be uh, how many debates would be held. Um, we wanted to find out what our participants thought of the debates themselves, of the format, and whether they watched them, and especially moving forward, whether the debates were a good thing for British politics and whether they should continue. So the criticisms of the debates that our participants had uh, were quite a lot, and but they also had quite a few positive things to say about the debates. So we'll start with the criticisms. Yeah, we should also say that we did focus groups on the nights of the debates and we also did focus groups when there were no debates held. So we have a mix of people who obviously sat through them and then were reacting to them in real time and afterwards. And then we had people in the other focus groups who some of them had not watched the debates but had seen some of the media impressions. So this represents uh, both of those types of uh, participants put together. In terms of the criticisms of the debates, a lot of people thought that the the debates themselves the produced leaders who were really polished and stage managed and the, their performances were the result of their handlers not that they were being authentic and answering questions in real time with you know with unprepared unscripted answers yeah. there was also some criticism that the debates were a little too much like the presidential system in the US and the and British politics are not based on persons or personalities. You're voting, as people po pointed out, you're voting for a party, and that a lot of people could be the leader of that party. So you're not uh, voting for David Cameron, you're voting for a conservative candidate who would put in a conservative government of which he is the leader. So this to focus on the leader was something that made people uncomfortable because it sort of misrepresented what the, the actual election was about. People were kind of confused as to why the debate formats were the way they were, so they didn't, under, didn't have a clear understanding of how the decision to have a five-way and a seven-way and these question time formats appearance were determined. So that kind of, um, I guess, you know, caused confusion and a little bit of resistance to the debates themselves. They also didn't understand why, I mean, they were happy that smaller parties were included, we'll touch on that next, but they were confused as to, again, the constitution of the, the why was there a seven-way one and then a five-way one and a three-way one, and why were these parties involved but the Northern, Northern Irish parties were excluded. All of this, again, lends some ambiguity and, unclear, and, and unclearness to the debates themselves, and that makes people a little bit suspicious of them. They also felt that during the debates, people weren't answering policy questions, there was too much of a back and forth between personalities. And this allowed then the politicians to avoid giving answers, direct answers and specific answers on the solutions that they would want to bring forward. And they thought again this goes back to it being too much like a presidential system and not about competing parties. There was in particular for David Cameron, but not just for David Cameron, all party, the party leaders were seen as not giving honest answers, but they had pre-prepared sound bites or quotes that were prepared in advance and they were just going through the motions of answering questions just to get to these pre-prepared sound bites. And for the people who watched more than one debate at the time, they remembered that, for instance, Leanne Wood said the exact same thing in the first time they saw her and the second time they saw her. So the party leaders really need to make sure and know that they probably think that there's a new audience every single time and that they can repeat what they've said. But people who watch the debates seem to like watch all of the debates and when they hear the same rhetoric lit in, in two weeks time or a week after, they just tune out. Like this isn't anything new I haven't heard, you know, I've heard this all before. Mm -hmm. So re repeating campaign lines across debates is something that our participants did pick up on. Um, but uh, our participants didn't all have just negative impressions of the debates. There were a lot of positive features that were identified. Primarily, the debates were seen as a way of accessing policy and accessing the party. So uh, many of our participants said that uh, they or people they knew did not really have uh, time to read all the manifestos of all the parties. And so um, the debates were a way of getting a snapshot of these manifestos and getting a snapshot of what the parties were going to do, uh, what the parties stood for. Um, linked to that issue, 
the participants also mentioned that the debates were a way of getting people who would not necessarily tune in into the campaign or into the day-to-day -day rigors, let's say, of the campaign. It was a way of getting apathetic people involved or uh, getting them to pay attention. Um, it was definitely a way of getting the party leaders all on one stage so you could see them all together and you could see how they performed under pressure. Um, and participants did say that uh, performing in a, debate, in a debate was not necessarily the same as performing as Prime Minister, but it would still give somebody um, a flavor of what that person would be like when they were put under pressure. Um, linked to this idea of having more than the three major parties involved, a lot of participants said that they felt that that was a very good thing, especially having the leaders of three parties um, being women and then to see both men and women competing on, an, on a stage of uh, on a national stage with equal parity that was definitely a positive thing for many of our participants um, debates were seen as a way of getting democratic accountability so making politicians account accountable for what they are saying and for what they are doing um, and then finally, people actually did feel that they learned new things from some of the debates, some of the time. They learned um, uh, some things about the main party policies, but they certainly learned a lot about the smaller parties and about their leaders. Yeah. So when we wrapped up this discussion of the debate, in order to push people, because it's always easy to complain about things, but if you really want to get um, a firm answer, it's, it's better to kind of push people a little bit farther. So we said, okay, imagine you had a magic wand and you had a power to wave your magic wand and eliminate all debates, all televised debates in future from British elections. Would you want to do that? And out of maybe, what did we end up having in the end? Close to 100 people? Yeah. Maybe seven or eight? Yeah, not a lot. Said that they would be willing to do that. Instead of, I mean, the other people obviously thought debates were good in, for all their complaints, they wanted to keep them. But what I think from our impressions and when we would ask this back, what the recommendations of our participants would could be summarized as it, is it would be better to see people debating their manifesto policies rather than this personality of going back and forth and you did this and you didn't do this and we were there here's the note with no money and you, you were naughty um, that's not what people want to see they want to use the debates to understand policies and understand the values behind these policies and yeah. where the leaders are coming from and what they want to do for the country yeah and then some leaders may say we are talking about our policies but actually our participants were like we want more specifics mm -hmm. and undecided uh, so our participants who had not decided how they were going to vote were definitely looking for more specifics. So for example, this 12 billion pound cut that the Conservatives proposed, participants were like, where are these cuts going to come from? Tell us. We need to know if these things are going to affect us and in the ways in which they're going to affect us. Right. Before the election, they wanted to know. Yeah. They were also of the, uh, um, of the view that the question time format was better than the presidential standing behind the desk. So they felt that the interactions between the audience, which um, was perhaps more combative, mm. they also felt it was more authentic. And it would actually force leaders to talk to real people and try to address real concerns mm. on, on a variety of issues. But I think from our perspective, one of the things that we noticed after, watch, like, after watching um, the the question time format with our group in, in Essex was that, um, so they had watched people argue for 90 minutes mm. nonstop. And they were kind of in a prickly mood themselves mm. afterwards. They were a little bit agitated and a little bit more pessimistic and negative. Mm. And I think that there is something to be said about the debate format where you open up with a few minutes statement where you're able to make a positive case or say something in a positive way and then a closing statement where you get to make a, um, a case for yourself and your parties again to close. So I think a little bit of a mix would actually be better mm -hmm. because people like their local hustings. Mm -hmm. They like the feeling of that closeness mm -hmm. and the interaction between an audience of, of the public and the politicians. Yeah. But what um, I think just having people fight for 90 minutes on television does not leave people with a good taste in their mouth afterwards. Even if they thought someone performed very well, it's still very contentious. So I would, I think I'm just kind of doing this on the fly, but it sounds like you agree. What, what would be better is some kind of mixed format yeah. where you wouldn't have necessarily a host of a show, but more like a moderator. A candidate could come out, 
give a few minutes of opening, have an interaction with the audience, and then have a closing statement as well. Because I think ending on that negative note kind of does stay with people emotionally after watching people argue for 90 minutes. Yeah, and I think um, especially in the Glasgow group because that was the last, those, were, those two were the last focus groups, there was a sense that it was good to see all the party leaders um, on one stage so, because you could then actually compare them. In a question time format you can't actually compare them because they come on one after another. So you, you can't compare them at the same time answering the same question. So having the party leaders on stage at the same time was a good way of looking at all of them together. You know, it's like you have a menu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're an undecided voter, you literally are picking from that menu. Uh, but having the same format over and over again with the party leaders not really saying anything different seemed a bit stale. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what people thought about the debates. You can learn more by reading our blog at the LSC General Election blog. Links will be in the description box below. So we have, uh, we are going to wrap this up by, um, in a fun manner, fun way, uh, because we asked our participants, who would you want to be stuck with in an elevator for two hours and who wouldn't you want to be stuck with in an elevator for two hours? And we'll give you the answers in an hour. You can think about this as well. So which of the seven party leaders would you want to be stuck with and wouldn't you want to be stuck with? And why? And why? Yes, and why? Alright, so till then, I've been Christy. And I'm Atia. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.